Our guest speaker today is Pam Christensen, Director of Economic Development for Madison Gas and Electric. Previously, Pam held positions in both the public and private sectors, including 15 years in a number of different roles with the state of Wisconsin. While working at the State Department of Commerce, uh, she served as the director of the Bureau of Entrepreneurship and Technology Development. Pam is one of the organizers who helped to get the Kiva launched in Madison. And she's going to tell us about this international program um, that provides community-based loans to entrepreneurs. We look forward to your presentation, Pam, and we've made a contribution to the Rotary International Polio Plus Fund as a way to say thanks for speaking to us today. So, Pam Christensen. Good afternoon, everyone. I don't know about you, but I'm not feeling quite so good about my contributions to God Bless America and happy birthday after hearing Cecilia, but uh, thank you for not making any kind of singing audition a prerequisite to speak to you today because uh, I think as my table mates would uh, attest to, I would not have made the cut, but uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here. If someone were to ask you for $25, and they told you that that $25 had the power to help change their life, would you give them that money? What if that person asked you for $25 and there was a 92% chance that they would repay you that money? Would you loan them that money? Is there anyone in the room that would not loan that money out to them? I'm guessing not, you guys are Rotarians, it's service above self, it's what you do. In a nutshell, that is what Kiva is all about. It's a microloan program to help dreams come true and provide opportunities to folks that may not often have them. And that's because dreams are universal. People have dreams of owning their own business. They have dreams of providing for their family, of uh, doing good things for their community. So there's a lot of dreams, but sometimes that opportunity is not there for everyone. And Kiva makes a difference and allows for folks that may be excluded from entrepreneurship because they financially can't afford it to pursue those dreams. That number one challenge for entrepreneurs, if you talk to somebody operating a business or thinking of opening a business, they'll tell you that financing that business is probably the biggest hurdle that they face. And that's where Kiva comes in. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the Kiva microloan program and how it came to Madison and uh, why you may be interested in it. So Kiva uses the internet to leverage the power of people to get folks to lend as little as $25 to help make a difference and to help somebody get a business launched up and off the ground and operated. Just a little bit of background, the word Kiva actually means unity in Swahili. And Kiva is an international nonprofit. It's been around for 15 years. And right now, Kiva makes about $3 million in loans to entrepreneurs all around the world each week. And I shouldn't say Kiva makes those loans. It's people like you and me and all around the world that are the ones that are actually the lenders. And just to help a little bit on the Kiva terminology, uh, just as it kind of throw things around, we talked about crowdfunding. So you may be familiar with crowdfunding. Some of you may have contributed to um, crowdfunding sites like Indiegogo or Kickstarter, GoFundMe. Usually that's for a philanthropic cause or for a charity or if someone's experienced a tragedy and their friends try to raise money for them. And that's a donation. You're donating money to whatever that cause may be. So Kiva uses crowdfunding, and in this case, it's all through the internet, and uh, crowdfunding is really the process of funding a project or a venture, and it's raising a small amount of money from a lot of people. And so that's how Kiva, power, that's how Kiva loans are powered. And uh, the borrower, if you, you'll see or hear me say borrower, which I struggle with that word, borrower. Uh, borrower, uh, see, I knew I was gonna do that. Uh, that's the, entrepreneur, the entrepreneur or the small business owner. And the lender, like I mentioned, that's you and me. Those are people that may know the entrepreneur. They may have never met them in their lives. It might be someone in your community. It could be somebody on the other side of the world. But uh, those are the lenders that help to uh, provide the funds for these loans. So these Kiva loans really do make dreams happen. This is the part where the bankers in the room look at me like I'm a little crazy when you talk about a Kiva loan because Kiva loans are 0% interest, there are zero fees. The entrepreneur or business owner can 
try to raise and uh, get $1,000 to $10,000. And those terms are usually um, two to three years. And again, it's funded by the borrower's network. It can be their family and friends. It could be uh, people that they know through their social media connections. Again, it could be somebody from across the street or across the world. Uh, in this case, the picture that you see here, and I'm going to mention all of the pictures in the presentation are Kiva loan recipients, and um, all but one, I think, are from the Madison area so far. So I'll try to, uh, if we have time, give you a little bit of story about each of them. In this case, this is Nam Namgal. Namgal uh, was an immigrant that came from Tibet and uh, came to the Madison area, went to nursing school, but really had a love of cooking, had a love of Tibetan food, and realized quickly that even though there's a significant population of Tibet individuals, Tibetans in the Madison area, there were no places that were serving good, authentic Tibetan food. So she uh, started a food cart with her brother and her family, they learned the business, the food cart was successful, it, uh, they decided to take it to the next step and uh, wanted to do a bricks and mortar building. She has a business called Little Tibet on East Johnson. If you have a chance to check it out, it's pretty amazing. Uh, the food is wonderful, it's uh, very homey, it's family friendly. Her brothers uh, have art and hand carvings that uh, they sell that are available in the, uh, in the restaurant. And uh, as an entrepreneur and as an immigrant, really, uh, she embraced that bootstrapping. So the only money that uh, she took out a loan for was through the Kiva program. So she raised the money herself. There was a gap and for about $10,000 and she needed a walk-in commercial cooler. And she was able to get a Kiva loan to purchase that cooler. And uh, that was funded by people. I took a look at her loan. Uh, they opened their restaurant in March. And the funding for her loan came from folks in the community here, but she had people from Maui to New York, down in Texas, uh, up to Portage, or Portage, <laughs> way up north in Portage, uh, <laughs> Portland. And uh, it was, so it was a really incredible opportunity. She was able to open her restaurant in March and is doing very well. I was hoping to give you an example of somebody that's currently an active Kiva loan uh, to explain the process, and I wanted to share the story of Jai. Um, so this is a good news, bad news story because um, Jai is not actively fundraising because he actually raised the money that he needed in two days. So he got a ton of support, and uh, he has a really interesting story. He um, grew up in an Indian family. He was told, you need to be a doctor, you need to be a lawyer, you need to be an engineer. And he followed part of that. He became an engineer and realized that he liked to build things, but he really liked to build things to help people. Uh, when he was in college, he and uh, his business partner uh, created a disability design club. And uh, they designed a mouse that could be used with your tongue. And they did that for a graphic artist that had a gunshot wound uh, and was paralyzed. And so he was able to continue doing his job because of what they invented. So his uh, new business venture is called Mystify. And uh, does anyone struggle with putting eye drops in their eyes like I do? All over my face, I squint, I I, it's horrible. He asked 200 mothers and 80% of them said that putting eye drops in their kids' eyes was a horrible experience. They're squirming around, you're trying to hold the eye open. He also talked to seniors who said, mobility issues, a problem, raising your hand up, tilting your head, tough to get the eye drops into the eyes. So he created a product and uh, that actually puts vapor takes the eye drop product and makes it into a vapor, a steady stream of, for about three seconds. You don't have to drop it into the eye. And he raised $4,000 in two days for the final production prototype for his Mystify product. So a great success story, but I couldn't use him as a, hey, go fund this guy because uh, he's already been funded, which is great. 20 people funded his loan. So why use Kiva? Uh, why not just have these folks go to a bank and get a loan? Uh, we mentioned it's a, the capital is a huge need for folks starting a business. And a lot of these entrepreneurs, especially women, people of color, veterans, struggle getting a conventional loan. They may not have the credit history. They may not have a high enough credit score. 
Uh, they may be looking for an amount that is just too small for a bank to take a look at and underwrite and spend the time uh, with a loan officer. It's just not the right fit. And so a lot of times they'll turn to putting things on their credit cards. They may go to some other uh, loan, oper loan uh, programs, uh, payday loans, things like that. Um, but Kiva is a way to provide affordable credit to these underserved borrowers. Credit, and for too long, looking at someone as credit worthy was really based on those numbers. It was based on the credit scores, collateral, cash flow. Kiva found that these numbers really don't mean much when you're paying back a loan. It really is, it's the character. It's the, those people, and especially in the Kiva program, as I mentioned, 92% are getting paid back in the Madison area. Since uh, Madison launched in February as a Kiva city, which I'll talk about in a moment, 100% of those loans have been paid back so far. So Kiva really flips that uh, lending paradigm and it's based on the character, the relationships, and the reputation. If you're asking your family and friends to support you and loan you money, um, you're probably gonna pay them back, right? You don't wanna be that schmuck uh, that doesn't uh, and uh, can make an awkward uh, time at the Thanksgiving table, right? But uh, this picture here, this is uh, Christine. Christine has slide potato chips. If you have not had slide potato chips, they are the best potato chips. She, uh, see that truck, that white truck? Uh, she would fill that truck with 1,200 pounds, 1,200 pounds of potatoes, and she would slice those potatoes by hand. She got a Kiva loan and used it to buy a potato slicer, which is making her life, as you can imagine, much easier. <laughs> Yeah, and they're allowing her to keep her fingers, as Susan pointed out. <laughs> so, um, People will ask, well, is this competing with banks? You know, are you offending the banks by coming out with this program? And the answer is absolutely not. Uh, you can see the difference between a traditional loan, which works great for some folks, and the Kiva loan. And really, for the banks, this is a tool. These are um, potential customers that they would normally have to say no to. And so now, instead of saying no, they can say Kiva. Uh, and they can push uh, folks to try a Kiva loan, they can get this money, they pay the loan back, they now have some credit history, they have um, you know, improving their credit score, and maybe they go to expand their business, which we're seeing with a number of Kiva clients. Christine that I just talked about has come back and gotten a second Kiva loan, and she's uh, to expand her business, which is a, another great success story. So these folks can uh, grow to become bankable and they become these, the future customers for the bank. Maybe not just as a personal, business, a, a personal bank client, but as a uh, business bank client. This is Angel. Angel got a $1,000 Kiva loan. He brought some heirloom corn seeds with him from Mexico that he grows the corn to make homemade tortillas. And uh, he is doing incredibly well. He, again, uh, kind of like Christine, slicing all those potatoes by hand, making the tortillas by hand. He used the $1,000 for a tortilla making machine. He's got really big dreams. He wants to eventually have a manufacturing, a production facility to make these uh, tortillas. And you can see why some of the business owners are rejected for the loans. As we mentioned, kind of the credit scores. They may not have that cash flow that a bank would like to see. Um, they may not have collateral to put down. So for all these reasons, Kiva really makes sense for them. Qualifications for a Kiva buyer, buyer, borrower is uh, pretty simple. You have to be over 18. You have to use the money for your business. You can't go buy a car or something like that with it. And you have to have a PayPal account. I didn't mention, but the folks who started Kiva uh, were some of the founders of PayPal. So everything goes through PayPal. And uh, the um, entrepreneur cannot be in a current foreclosure or bankruptcy. It doesn't mean that they can't have one in their past, which is another difference between a um, regular conventional loan. That um, is not something that would hold them back from getting a Kiva loan. So how it works, you can go to the Kiva website and all of the different folks all around the world that are looking to raise money for their business, that are looking for loans are listed on there. There's filters that you can pick. You can do it by women only businesses. You can do it by the type of business. Maybe it's an agriculture related. It could be eco-friendly businesses. You can do it geographically. 
and it'll show you, it'll tell you a little bit about the um, entrepreneur and their business, what they're going to use the money for, where they are in their fundraising. Uh, they have 30 days in the public funding area to try to get the money. And uh, just like any of these other Kickstarter campaigns, if you've seen it, they don't get the full amount. Um, the loan doesn't get funded. But we've had tremendous success in Madison since launching as a Kiva City. So you can lend as little as $25 through PayPal. And then each month, if that, once that loan is funded, each month you get paid back into your PayPal account. So if you do a $25 loan, you're going to get about 80 cents back a month for the next three years until that loan is paid back. Um, but it adds up, and that $25 made a huge difference to that entrepreneur. And you can choose to keep that money in the account. You can take it back out. If you want to leave it in there, you can relend it to somebody else which is exactly what I did for Linda and her YES LMS, Learning Management System. Linda figured out that people who have disabilities can't use the internet like the rest of us do. If you're blind you, um, and you want to do some, an online learning course, you can't do it. And so she figured out a way to do that. I had repayments in my PayPal account and I uh, was able to lend to her. And as I told my husband, it was free. It didn't cost me anything, which he didn't buy. He also doesn't buy it when I tell him what a deal I got when I was shopping and it was 50% off. Oh my gosh, I saved us so much money. He doesn't buy it. But in this case, uh, it's, that relending works really well. So making Madison a Kiva city, there was a group of folks that got together and decided, you know, this is wonderful, this is happening, Kiva's open to anyone, anywhere, but we really want to try to push this more in the Madison area. And so um, Wisconsin Women Business Initiative Corp, WIBIC, Madison Gas and Electric, City of Madison and the Doyen Group got together figured to figure out how can we make Madison become a Kiva city. And what that means to, as a Kiva city is that you have a full-time person working on Kiva. And we are so lucky in this uh, market. We have Nicole Crust. And Nicole, make, can I make you stand up again even though you did it for the guest part? So Nicole is our Kiva person for Madison, and she is amazing. She works with these entrepreneurs and businesses. She helps them tell their story. She helps them get the right picture so it grabs your attention that you're going to want to look at that and learn about their loan. She works with them all through the process. Once they get funded, she still works with them to make sure things are going right, to make sure that they're repaying. Maybe they don't know enough about accounting. She'll point them in the right direction. Go to the Small Business Development Center. Take an accounting class. Get those skills that you need. So she's always working with them to figure out what they need. An is also here from WIBIC, and um, he runs the loan program for WIBIC. So a lot of these folks that have gotten Kiva loans go on to get a WIBIC loan for a larger amount and they're, to help their business expand and grow. So we were able to raise funds to do a three-year pilot project with Kiva. So we have Nicole, pays for Nicole, pays for the Kiva platform uh, for three years. And we're hoping that uh, the program, people will see the value in it and we'll be able to continue it. But uh, these are some of our early supporters and thank you to these organizations because of them. We were able to have Madison be a Kiva city and really make a difference uh, for the, and make some dreams come through true for these entrepreneurs. And it just makes sense here. Chandra miller Feenan is here as a guest today. She runs Starting Block Madison. I know she talked to you a few months ago. Uh, she gave you some really good information on why entrepreneurship is so important to the Madison region, the difference that entrepreneurs are making in our community. So this was a no-brainer. This was something that we needed to help all entrepreneurs, not just the high-tech entrepreneurs, but entrepreneurs of all color, of all race, of um, all different types to make sure that they have the opportunity to pursue their businesses. I uh, should mention, so since these little, we're talking about microloans, right? So $1,000 to $10,000 doesn't sound like a huge amount of money, but when you put all these microloans together, it really adds up. Since Milwaukee became a Kiva City about three years ago, that's, there's been 300 loans totaling over $1.3 million that have gone out to different entrepreneurs. <clears throat> And just to give you a quick uh, overview so you can see kind of where the loans are going, um, how many have happened. So we launched Madison as a Kiva City in February. As I mentioned earlier, 100% of the loans that have been funded have been paid back so far, or in the, I should say are in the process of being paid back. And uh, over um, two-thirds of those have gone to women. Over half of them have gone to uh, racial minorities. And when you look at the bigger picture in Wisconsin, uh, 237 different borrowers, 
Uh, some of them have, as I mentioned, to get up to that 300 number that I talked about earlier, have come back for multiple loans. 1.3 million out there uh, with 23,000 different lenders. So again, the people like us that are um, helping to support these loans. So just in summary, Kiva it gives people a chance to make a loan and change a life. Uh, it's a chance to support local entrepreneurs in the Madison area with as little as $25. And like I said, you get that money back. Uh, it's these excluded entrepreneurs that are, get access to capital through Kiva. Zero interest, zero fees, $1,000 to $10,000 loans. And it's really making a difference and working well. So how can you help? Consider becoming a Kiva lender. Take a look at the site. Help spread the word about Kiva. If you know somebody thinking of starting up a business or um, that has started a business and could use a little extra cash to let them know that Kiva is available. Uh, with the holidays coming up, Kiva actually provides gift cards. You can give gift cards to friends and employees. I do it each year to my give my nieces $25 gift cards. And they have a lot of fun going online, looking at the different businesses, picking who they want to support, and uh, works really well. And just talking about Kiva, we're just really um, we're so excited to be here. We we were talking about uh, launching Kiva back in February. Speaking at Rotary was one of our big goals, so we're really grateful and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Sorry again about my singing. <laughs> and uh, just, I thought it was interesting. Um, I got an email on Monday from an old college friend and uh, his brother, turns out, is your district governor uh, for Rotary, uh, Edwin Boss. And so Edwin was uh, looking at his announcements and he saw my picture, which I can't believe that he even recognized me without the beer in my hand. In the 80s, my hair was way bigger than it is now. But he recognized me and he sent me a note letting me know that uh, the Fort Atkinson Rotary Group has been active as uh, Kiva lenders for the last 10 years. They had a group that got together, they put $5,000 into a fund, and over the last 10 years, they have done $52,000 in loans with that original $5,000, with that repayment that I talked about. So almost 2,000 loans have gone out um, to folks all around the world. So he did give me permission, he said, to challenge the Madison Group to think about doing something fun with Kiva. And with that, here is the Kiva website. Uh, notice uh, I'm the mouth, Nicole does the work. Uh, so she's great. Um, so she is your contact because she can really um, do a much better job than I do talking about Kiva. And one last business plug, this is Blue Mango. These guys are really interesting. They're out of the Milwaukee area, but uh, they came up with a solar dehydrator and they take the fruit, mangoes, coconuts, things that have fallen on the ground that uh, would probably go to waste, and they dehydrate them. They turn them into charcoal bricks that can then be used for fuel. And also, um, they can use the fruit um, in dehydration. So, I mean, it's amazing the ideas that are out there and what can happen when people have a chance and they have the means to make to pursue their dreams. So with that, thank you so much for the chance to be here. It was great to see a lot of friendly faces. No heckling on the questions for all those folks that I know in the audience. <laughs> Pam, uh, Nancy Young here has a question. Thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate hearing this and I'm wondering, you must have a brochure we can walk away with so that we remember these details. We don't have brochures here, but uh, we can get them here for a future meeting. Or if you want to give me your card, we will definitely follow up and get anything sent to anyone that wants more information. Or feel free to go online and uh, check it all out. There's a great amount of information there. Uh, one more question here. Thank you for your last example. Is it easy to go on the website and identify product projects that will be green or reduce our carbon footprint or be environmentally friendly? Yes, Kiva has uh, different filters, as I mentioned, for the different types of loans, and there is an eco uh, button that you can get. Um, not necessarily right now, I don't think there's anything in the Wisconsin market that uh, is falls in that category, but there are businesses all over the world that are doing things like Blue Mango is doing that you can take a look at. Another question here from Charles. Uh-oh. Hi, Pam. Hi, Charles. How does the application and qualification process work? You know, it is, it's a quick 
process. Uh, that's the really nice thing about Kiva. So there is an underwriting process, and that's um, part of uh, what Kiva does. So Nicole helps get the application. It go, it's all done through an online process, and then Kiva does the underwriting. And um, Nicole can give you some, a little bit more information on how that looks, but you've got the basic criteria. And they do look at um, certain things uh, as the borrowers and kind of their, uh, not necessarily their credit worthiness, but things that speak to their character. Anything you want to add on that, Nicole? No, um, I, if you have some really specific questions, I'd be happy to take you after. Right, and Nicole and I will s s stick around afterwards to answer any other specific questions. And Pam, we'll do one last question here from Mark. Be nice, Mark. That's a lot of pressure for me. <laughs> Hi, Pam. Uh, for borrowers who don't have a strong network in the community, your friends and family, you might be able to loan. Does Kiva help make those connections between borrowers and lenders who might not be familiar with them? We're looking at different ways that we can do that. And one of the things we're looking at are different partnerships with other entrepreneurial groups. We're in discussions with Starting Block. How do we get that information out? Starting Block's an amazing community. So someone could be new to the Madison area. Maybe they don't have their family and friends close by. But uh, Starting Block is becoming definitely a family, a community. So getting that word out. Um, there's a lot of other great organizations, and so trying to plug them in, and Nicole does a great job with that. Um, there's a whole program, and um, given the um, amount of time that we had to speak, there's matching funds that are also available for individuals that belong to an ethnic chamber of commerce. WEDC, the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, has matching funds that go out to Main Street communities. So rural Wisconsin, uh, those Main Street communities can also do matching funds. So there's a lot more to Kiva, um, and the uh, but I was told I had to be done by 1.10. So we didn't get to talk about those, but we're happy to share that information with anybody. Thank you. Well, thank you, Pam and Jason, for uh, doing the questions. Remember, tomorrow is... Um, is my microphone on? Yes. Tomorrow is World Polio Day, and we hope you'll stop by the Great Dane Pub downtown location between 5.30 and 6.30 p.m. Also remember that next week's meeting on October 30th starts at 4.30 in the afternoon up on the 8th floor here at the Park Hotel. We are adjourned.